All right, everybody, what I wanted to do today, I know you guys are in the middle of your projects, and um, I wanted to add a couple props on. And then when I decided to add those props on, because I've had some different inquiries from students, um, I also decided to get some more examples. So I put together a little lecture from you from going on to Pinterest and Google on props that have been done for different industries. Some are from animation, some are from DreamWorks, and some are from the game and the 3D industry, okay? So I thought I'd show you all those because I do have a couple students in here that do have a 3D background. If you decided you wanted to model a couple of props and then paint over them in Photoshop, I think that would be totally acceptable, okay? I don't have any problem with that. So anyway, basically what I did is I put this link right here on the blog, new prop options, okay? So number one is a specialized close-up of a house because I had some people made a comment that they're going to have uh, a house inside an environment or location but they wanted to do a separate call out on it and I think that would be fine as long as it meets the standards that we're about to see um, in a couple of the samples. The second option were food items um, but I would want multiple items on a page probably at least seven plus because food can be pretty easy to draw but, you know, it could be everything from pizza to like a big, you know, ham on a bone type of thing. But I would highly recommend that you go in and do color too. So that's one of the hard things is that we've been talking about different props. It, they, and I know it's a time management thing, but some of you need to go in and try to get a quick color pass in there because it looks 20 times better in your portfolio than it does is just a black and white grayscale, okay? The other thing is environment items like plants or rocks, okay? And that's another example where I want you to have at least seven on a page, okay? Not just like, oh, here's one rock. That counts as one of my props. No, remember, after I show you the work today, I think what's important about that is you see the standard of props that everybody else is doing in the industry, and you realize, hey, if I want to get a job working in the industry, I need to be at this caliber. So if, and it's easy to get to that caliber. Some of it's just quick drawing, quick sketching, followed up with some real simple... Uh, color techniques in Photoshop, meaning that like you paint a prop like a local value, you come in and you hit it with a texture with like a brush, and then you maybe select one side of it and darken it to create a light and dark edge so it looks like it's more three-dimensional. That's all we're talking about. So I put those here, and then if you scroll down, remember the prop options? I added them in right here. So number 9, 10, and 11. So I gave you a couple more options that you could do there, okay? So with that done, let's take a look at some of the samples that I grabbed. Okay, so I, I came across quite a wide variety, and I don't know what order the, our viewer is going to display them in, but um, I thought these were really important to look at because if you were working on, I, could, I talked to a couple of students in here that have different pathway goals. I have a couple that want to go into Imagineering. I have a couple that want to go into feature films or animation, a couple that are into games. So this sort of, this lecture encompasses everything. But I thought some of these were just some really great examples. I mean, look at... These are different rocks that are supposed to be used as mirror. There's different types of fo foliage. Uh, there's some different rock structures here. There's a couple key elements that might be used inside um, the, the, the game that they're doing. Oops. Whoa, whoa. It's back up there. Okay. And then, look, there's a couple leaf variations, and then there's a couple big brush viney type of things. Okay. That's great. If you want to do a page like that, go for it. But I want at least seven on a page. Just don't give me, like, one style of a tree. That's not good enough, okay? Um, here is another great example. Here's, you know, a 3D student. So obviously this might have been textured inside Maya, but it's really easy, like Paul or Trevor, or some of you guys that have that 3D background, you can build something like this in Maya really quickly. It's a rough. Render it and then bring it into Photoshop and just really quickly throw textures and other elements over it really fast, okay? So especially if you separate the render of the prop from the background, which is really easy to do in Photoshop, uh, excuse me, in Maya, because in Maya you could change the environment color to like a green, a glossy green or something, right? And that's under the environment settings of the attributes for the camera. If you don't know where that is, I can show you. But if you do that, you render a rough prop in Maya really quick and model something, there's a couple things you can do. Number one, you can now duplicate that, right, Paul, and you can render it from a couple different angles. And then when you bring it into Photoshop, as long as it's separate from the background, so if the background's green, that's going to allow you to select the green and delete it all, then you have the prop. And the reason why that's extremely helpful is that then when you select your prop, you can just fill it with like different layers, different painting techniques in terms of using your layer options for doing overlay, soft light, hard light. You can use uh, bring in textures really quick 
and just trim around. So as long as you have a selection around the prop, it's really going to expedite part of your workflow. Okay. <clears throat> Came across those. Beautiful. Okay. Now, if you can go into color, I mean, this is, this is for, I forget what future film project, but this, is it? Okay. Is it? Yeah. Okay. That's what I thought. <laughs> Um, I have a couple things in here from Disney, from DreamWorks, and a couple others, and then from Sony Imageworks, okay? But, I mean, these are beautiful examples. So, again, what is this set right here? This is a feature level, okay? So, if you were to draw a bunch of vehicles, it could quickly go in and throw some base color on them. Now, you might not have time to completely... These are a little bit more rendered with light coming from a particular direction. The line quality is almost gone. I don't expect you to get to this, but if you push yourself, you'd be amazed where you can get to, okay? <clears throat> Thought that was a nice little study of just a house, okay? Not the surrounding houses around it, just the house with the different colors, couple, you know, the tree stylization. <clears throat> different gondolas. So obviously that's from DreamWorks right there. The um, I believe that's from Turbo, and these were different stylized motorhomes that were going to be going to the race. Okay. Uh, what's funny is they look like sort of the same motorhome. They've just changed the graphics on the side, which means they might be changed in color as well. So it would be really easy in Photoshop if you could do something in tone like this to just select this and then you just put an overlay of hue and saturation on top of it. You just put gradients and blend it, and you'd have like four different vehicles right there, easily. Okay. Another 3D prop, just really simple. It's just a table that was done, but um, it's you can tell it's 3D because it has these the hard line edges. So that means it was like a low res model that somebody painted over. But then when you look at Part of, and it could have ended up being rendered too, but somebody had to paint this and indicate what the candles would look like and the cloth and the shine and all that type of stuff. All right. There's some, these are some more great examples, different vehicle props that I came across. Very nicely done. Okay. Like I mentioned, I mean, I love looking at this stuff because it gives me great ideas too. I like how everyone has their own type of. We were just talking about graphic design earlier, and one of the importance of how of what graphic design plays in our work as illustrators. And I think this is a great example where you know you're looking at every one of these. Let me see if I can zoom in and look at look at the cool graphic design implied logo that's in there that's helping to you know to push the illustration forward. I mean, every one of these has something that's relevant to the particular design of the vehicle. Okay, pretty cool. Bridge of stuff. That was one. Isn't that nice? <laughs> Simple, easy. So that's what, you know, when I was looking at that, and someone else had asked me about that the other week. Can I do a close-up? And I think I said, nah. And then I thought, you know what, why not? Because it's done all the time where you have to go, and you might have a house and environment, but you don't see it from multiple views or angles. So there's no reason as a prop why you couldn't pick this house. Do it from a three-quarter. Maybe also, you know, do it from like a reverse view as well or another side view. Again, the more information. So what is the purpose of you doing all your props, right? It, it is to provide information down a pipeline to the viewer. Okay. And that viewer might be a 3D artist. It might be your art director. It might be your storyboard supervisor. You don't necessarily know. So you need to provide as much information as possible. So that's, that's uh, usually some form of a render like this. It can be color swabs, CYM, excuse me, CYMK swabs, um, texture swabs in there as well. But I mean, I think this is just this. It's immaculate. It's a beautiful design right there. Those are really nice too. The much more high high end, little you know, much more realistic but stylized too. Okay. I mean, you got to really zoom in there and look at some of the. Oops. Whoa. Let's back up. Look at some of the detail. Let me zoom out just a little bit. That's, I mean, there's like highlights on here, faded textures, light sources looks great. I mean, that's really nicely done. But 
that's a wonderful portfolio page. Whoever has that on their page, um, that's a good example of a complicated prop. Okay, it's a vehicle that's done. It's stylized. There's lots of information on it. There's even a logo detail on the side here. We even have different texture variants being indicated from, from glossy to sort of satin, rust, rusty-like looking finishes. Okay, very nicely done. All right, so this is what I mentioned about doing some studies, if you like, on um, plant life or related environment life. So if you have an environment that has multiple stones, go do a couple stone studies. However, though, I asked for what? At least a page like this. So there's five on here. I put seven, but you understand the point. Okay, I just don't want you to do like two or three. Here's a rock and another rock, right? We want a little bit more than that, okay? But I mean, this is the kind of stuff that you're going to have to do when you guys are working, okay? Much more detailed study here. So uh, this is from Feng Zhu. Um, I, again, I found this on Google, actually. And I thought, you know, that's a great example of having to draw a couple of variants of a location and then show the side view of how they connect together. And then here's a three-quarter you know, sort of isometric view sort of looking down on it. That's great. Complicated prop again. Okay? It's very nice. <clears throat> Beautiful. Stylized. That, re you know, it's funny is that I don't know who did that, but um, that reminds me of the an artist I work with at Big Idea, Daniel Lopez Munoz, who's now at Pixar. He's one of their art directors. And um, he used to paint just like that. His Photoshop work was incredible. And he would do that type of that type of look to characters too. But I think that would be an acceptable, that's a nice page right there. That's a simple, it's a spaceship, right? It's simplified, but the fact that there's so many variants there and he went in and he rendered them really quick, it looks really fantastic, okay? That's from DreamWorks, okay? So now you have an exact idea of what a piece of work is gonna look like coming down the pipeline there. You know what? I'm sorry. I say it is blue sky because that's um, looks like the girl from Rio, right? Yeah. Okay. So look, look at that. Uh, different desk. Look, exploration of internal leg and top design. So there's all the you know a couple of the variations. Here's a couple little marker comps done. Little thumbnails there. There's the scale reference, and then there's the paint. Looks fantastic. So I wanted to show you guys this stuff because I want you to get an idea of what is you know, when you're doing props, because I did come across something on here I'm going to show you that I would consider to be more of a rough than finished. Because I want you to see what the level is. Some of you need that level as artists to figure out, you know, how to ascertain your skill sets to apply to that and what the mark is to get there. Okay? That, that was beautiful. Another example of doing just a study on one particular house. Okay? I mean, that would look great in a portfolio. You could pull that off and with Photoshop, no problem. That could just be a simple line cleanup, or you could even go into that with tracing paper and color erase pencils, the indigo blue, and you could pull off that type of look. Okay? I had to put that up because that's painted by my buddy Simon Rogers at DreamWorks. Okay? And I saw that, and I'm like, cool, that's something Simon did. It's paint mixed with photo, or... photo, photo blend. Is there anything wrong with that? No, there's not. Why? If it expediates your workflow in production, that's fine. I had I did freelance once for a guy. I don't like to show it, but I did some freelance once where a guy wanted a whole bunch of drawings on a couple environments in the desert and with rocky environments and like in Utah, like that type of rocky structure. And he said, I don't care. Just use a bunch of photos and paint over them. Just make them different. It's fine. There's nothing wrong with it as long as you get your point across. And I think this is a great example. So that was for crudes. Okay, so even as a biz dev artist, as Simon, by the way, his he goes by Sim R. If you want to look him up, um, I've known him, worked with, together with him on a couple projects. Really nice guy, uh, super friendly. I actually need to give him a call. I haven't talked to him in a while. Um, beautiful, beautiful work. Really talented guy. Okay, I think I've showed that before in a couple of my classes, but that is just a beautiful page right there. Simple, easy. Look at all the variations in the rock, and I think what's really nice are the just the two things: the style and characteristic of them, the silhouette reads of them are very nice, and also what's really cool if you want to do this on your prop, you can have really simplified colored props, but if you throw gradients, 
anytime you throw a gradient on top of a prop, it makes it look extra special. It gives it a little bit of TLC, and there's just a little secret about that on the side. Anytime you use gradients inside an environment or character or prop, it's gonna, it just gives it a little bit more attention. The eye loves to see nice value changes going from a dark to a light. So any type of gradient, whether it be a transition in a tonal gradient, or it be a gradient that's transitioning perhaps from orange to yellow, okay, is gonna be a really attractive little add-on that you could place on. And you'd be amazed how you could just select part of the line drawing. You hit V, the move tool, okay, and then you just quickly boop, drop a gradient and you go over it. In fact, I learned something really cool in Photoshop this weekend that I didn't know. I selected, so I had I have three layers I'm painting on. I selected one layer, I said, command all, hit V, the move tool, and then hit a button on the arrows, and it selects the image for me, right? Then I went over, touched another layer, and did the same thing, and then it took the selection of both and left me with where it was merged in the middle, where the layers were overlapping each other. Does that make sense? Oh. It was pretty cool. I'll have to show it to you later. Yeah. It was a cool little, I was like, oh my gosh, it just did that. I never knew it could do that, right? And it was pretty neat to discover that. Okay, beautiful samples right here. Okay. <clears throat> that made me think of Patrick's assignment that we had, right? When he had to design a character. It was with a, a bike when Patrick Ballesteros was here. So I don't know who did these. Sorry, they're a little, um, sorry for the middle finger, the guy on the, the right, but I thought that was sort of funny, right? But I, they're, they're just a nice example of, characters being put on the props. Again, if that was in a portfolio, I'm not expecting you to get to something of that rendered quality. There's a lot of time in there. Those are easily, you know, I'd say probably, you know, I think the, every bike in there is at least a day illustration. And then the, the character is at least another day of rendering. So just think of that. That's two days. You have three. That's six days of solid rendering to get to that type of page. Does that look gorgeous in a portfolio? Absolutely it does. It might be a little bit of overkill. It's much more of a finished illustration. Okay. There are some building fronts. This right here, that's a building done in Maya right there. That's a front render of a building in Maya right there. Those are the paint overs right there. Okay. I mean, this is more the building here, but then they've, they've gone over it, and this is maybe a modification of that. And here was part of the drawing of it. Okay. Oops. I don't mean to jump ahead and then show you all this other stuff. Um, this is from the same. Yeah, that was, was just attached. This from Disney feature. So I don't know what project this was for. Does anyone know? It looks like, is that Christmas Carol? Christmas Carol? Based on the bottom. Oh, yeah. yeah the Maybe this is something new they're doing. I mean, it's this is dated September 20th, 2007. So me, maybe they were reworked it a bunch of times and shelved it. Maybe they're doing a different version of it. But um, I came, that's cool. I'm like, did someone leak that out? You know, because that's something we haven't seen, right? Okay. And look at how wonderful that is. I would even give that a complicated prop score in terms of, it's, it's just a really nice, it's a boat. I don't know if you noticed, it's a boat turned upside down. It's been turned into like a little, some type of a, um, pub or sea going or lodge or you know I mean it definitely looks like a pub but it's hard to see this front detail that's up here really nicely done and when we talk about silhouette look at the silhouette on that bad boy imagine if you had to take a line a red pen and you just started right here and you drew a line around this there's so much mileage to that line going up and over all these props and it reads so well I mean even this in the back here having that little you don't even need that on there, but it still works really nice. Really great example there. Okay. Love that. Remember we talked about a vehicle? There's another vehicle. Right? Simple, easy, fun. Food items. You could have a page just like that. Why not? Your characters usually eat food. A lot of times you might see there might even be a, a scene where they're eating. There could be a dinner of some kind. And I think that's a great example right there of different foods. I mean, look at that. You have everything from like a cupcake to a, a, a chicken with no feathers to the fish. Looks sort of like a piranha, right? The bowl of fruit, the cheese. It's very stylized. Uh, nice, simple, easy paint. 
in terms of everything has light side, dark side, simple local color, and then you have one area that's been selected, it's like the dark side, a little bit of texturing and some other rendering techniques on there, but I think any, a lot of you in this room would be capable of doing such a thing like that. So I think that'd be a great sample right there for food. All right, <clears throat> that's from, I believe that's from, uh, that's Vikings. How to train a dragon. Excuse me, I'm thinking, yeah, from the Vikings and How to Train a Dragon. Um, and I thought that was great. That's in the art of book, right? Someone just had that up there on Google. More cool props. Okay. I don't know what this is from, but I thought this was really great because the first thing that caught my eye were all the beautiful lineup of the silhouettes down on the bottom. All those variations of different monsters and they're sort of offset like robots. I love that type of stuff. That's a personal favorite of mine. In fact, I'm working on a piece right now for my grad show of a little kid who accidentally was like in his room with electronics all pieced together with toaster parts and he accidentally creates a portal and the portal opens up and like seven robots are coming out of it looking at him and he doesn't realize they're there yet you know so um that, when i saw that i'm like that's a wonderful little piece look at the the wonderful angles in here too really nicely done okay uh there are some samples here from dreamworks okay Peabody and Sherman, that's a prop sheet. So that's a perfect example of something that's going to be handed down in the studio that's going to be passed along in an art direction pack through the pipeline. So that's a pure example of art that's going to go, that right there, that's going to go to the, the texture artists. Might even go to a 3D modeler for something to be modeled. It's going to go to probably the art directors to be approved. You have lots of variants there. Look at this, even... For reference only, here's part of the scene. Okay, that's where the character is looking at this girl. That's the location, the lighting. So they make sure things match and don't pop out too much. Get too much attention to them. You want to make sure that they are color corrected to fit inside the scene. Okay. Another great collection. Someone in here was working on dirigibles, right? Um, love this fabric that's all in here. Look at that drawing up here. It's, oops. Let me see if I can zoom in there a little bit. Yeah, just a light line drawing. I mean, here, here's where you have to think smart sometimes. Do all your props have to be finished color? No. But if you make them look nice, you make them look, look like they're thought out and well done. So here's a great example of this. This could be a separate 11 by 17 image right here. Okay? And if that was a separate image, look at all the information in there. It has the key drawing in there. It has close-ups of a different area. It has a front view, a side view. It has indication of how the internal mechanism works. It has detailed description underneath. You could easily do something like that and get away with not even have to color that, but it's the, it's the piece of paper that looks fantastic. It makes it look like a blueprint. So if you spend some time, I mean, yeah, you could just do your prop and slap it all on white pieces of paper, but why? Put something behind it, make it stand out a little bit, make a simple page, okay? Allow it to adhere to something though, it has some type of form for your story. We will talk about, haven't forgot, I'm gonna show you guys how to do an outline page for all your props, environments, and everything that'll go into part of your, your pitch book for this visual development class, okay? All right, so I thought this was a great example. Then you look down here, and there's a very nicely rendered version. There's a close-up of it as well, okay? Beautiful stuff. Came across that. Having the scale on there. There's a nice finished render of those. I thought someone else in here was doing some type of stone like that. Some type of carved wood headstones or spiritual stones or whatever. Put totem. Thank you. Totem poles. Yes. Okay. There's a basic book that opens up. Now. I think these are great drawings. Problem is, is they're just, they're almost blending into the paper. So it, at a minimum, you would want to put tone under this. What I would do, if I had to get this out and I wanted to make it look like a decent page in a portfolio, I put a tone piece of paper on the back of it. I would put some tone under the props, and then I would hit it with white. Real quick, fast, easy technique that looks really great, but I wouldn't turn that in right there. Why? 
in the state it's in right there, it looks like a rough drawing, doesn't it? It's too rough. It's not cleaned up enough. But you can easily go into that line quality, put it on tone paper with something underneath it with some white highlights, and it would make it come alive. Okay? Uh, here's another great example. So down below here are some... These look like line drawings done with a Prismacolor pencil or another pencil, either on tracing paper or pencil. Nice cleaned up props. And up here, they have them painted. That'd be a great page. Okay? All right. Um, I don't... I came across that. I immediately thought of Anthony and Paul. So I'm like, they could model something like that in Maya pretty quickly as rough, right? As long as you're using your smooth options, right? The, the one to three options in Maya. And then, and then you render it real quick. And then, like I mentioned before, you go right in to Photoshop and you're just literally putting texture images on top and blending them in. It shouldn't, you, should, you could be able to get away with painting something like that inside Photoshop on a prop in probably three hours, four hours. And that would be a great looking prop right there. Okay? What do you guys think? I mean, it looks great. All right. There's another stylized, similar. I think that's, yeah, that's that same artist who did that other blue house we're looking at. A lot of fun. Very stylized. Lots of rounds and curves in there. Very nice. Beautiful paint as well. Okay. Another 3D model set here from DreamWorks. Samples of other props used. Okay. Some more. i to zoom into this guy here. Sorry it's a little blurry. Some of these images are great to see, but hard to get full res. Uh, I don't know what studio this was for. Carbine Studios. I think that's part of NCSoft, if I'm right. Carbine Studios are out here in Irvine. Okay. Uh, great props here for a game. Vehicles, ships, tents, environment, house, surroundings, trees. Absolutely beautiful. Okay. So there's a good example. We've now seen examples from 3D. We've seen animations from, uh, excuse me, animations. Props from animated features. Okay. There, I think there's a couple in here for some TV shows. And now we've also seen an example, very similar work coming out of a local game studio. Okay. Now, those are cool. Beautiful design, right? What's the problem with those? It's just flat. It's on a white piece of paper. Put a tone image behind it. So with that time period, I'm thinking like maybe even a leathery feel or something, right, behind it. And then I would go into those props and hit it with light coming from the left side with some simple white highlights. Then I would select the dark areas of the shadows and then just go to levels in Photoshop and darken that quick. Boom. So you could spend easily another... I'd say probably 40 minutes on that and have a much better presentation sheet than just having white on or gray on white. I'm starting to come to this new conclusion that just white kills everything. Okay, it does. White flattens things out. And having just a solid white kills your presentation of artwork, props, and everything. Unless, there's a, unless you have a lot of color, then it makes it the color sort of pop off the page. Okay, it's a little different scenario but for props you know look at that white who I didn't know that was there in that order but here's a good example look at the white with that color on there it makes the color sort of pop okay nicely done all right complicated prop another vehicle there this was from Crudes from DreamWorks so look at this uh, here's an example of painted elements here there's there's uh, other 3D elements here showing how it opens. And then over here is all the realistic reference showing the real flowers, the texturing, and all that. Okay. All that has to go to a texture department. And then not only that, even when it goes into rendering, they have to make sure, make, make sure they have the right rendering software working on rendering stuff out and making it look the way it should look. That's a whole other... Actually, there's another position there called a render wrangler. Render wrangler. <laughs> That's what they do. And their job is to sit down and when they render stuff is to make sure it's looking the way it's supposed to look. And they refer to these art direction sheets to make sure things are passing. Okay. Another great example here. Another sample from DreamWorks here. 
some different styled trees with shrubbery on them and then here's a nice painted version and then look at the scale relationship okay pretty cool um, that's for Megamind some other sketches if you have some reference from your prop that you've already gathered in your reference pages and you'd like to include that I think that's totally fine the end result is having a nice professional page in your portfolio right so you could have a column of reference that indicates then you could have your prop drawn with with color style choices CYMK options and texture options next to it it's all about arranging the page so uh, most of you in this class I've already done demos about making a good portfolio page I have a couple up there if you haven't seen them I could link them back up or I could do another demo for you about just having some something besides a nice white page. So having this from Mr. Peabody and Sherman, right? There's the information. Looks really nice. Oops. Where did I go there? And then you look down below here. Same thing. Character height and scale. So you guys have already done characters. You can make a little height chart. You can have a silhouette of a character there. It's just for indication. And then next to it, you can have the prop done up with various information okay there's some more Peabody in, in Sherman great props so I'm, I'm glad I recorded this so I'll put the link up I'm not, I didn't want to put all the work and and have a huge you know amount of work on the blog but I'll put the link up for this video and I'll link it up to my YouTube site that way if you just remember you could easily go into Pinterest or Google and type in you know uh, Peabody and Sherman prop designer artwork and it'll give you a good idea of what some you know studios are doing I like this one too down there, it's very nicely done. Okay. I came across these and I'm like, man, those look like Michael Spooner sketches. So that's nothing wrong. That would be great. You could do little studies like that for your environment that could fit on a page. Obviously, you want to have those are a little bit tighter in terms of their values. So any one of those could be used as like a finished study. But I think that would be a nice presentation page right there to some nice sketches that you have placed together. Okay. So I came across this, and I thought, that's a nice little page there. It's really good. But again, the problem is, is it just feels like rough drawings. I think that would be good for an initial pass to show a client. That's what I would do. Um, I do that all the time, quick little line studies with light gray underneath it to get it to pop off the paper. But I wouldn't be delivering that down line to, to me, that's not a finished page. Okay, That's just a rough page. Okay, And there's some more there. All right, so that's basically it. So I thought I'd go through and show you all those. I think we had about 40-something examples there. Um, it's nice to get to see all those variations. Ah. Uh.